Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel where I share great ideas. Well, I'm not sure if this is a great idea or not. In fact, I think it might be kind of a dumb idea, but I wanted to test my articulating arm out again uh, since I just uh, made it and uh, made one good project. So I was looking around for another piece of seasoned wood and couldn't think of anything. So I dug an old hydro pole out from underneath the uh, snow. Actually, it was a we call it electric pole in some places, but in BC here we call them hydro pole because water or electricity is made largely by water power. Anyway, uh, my idea was is to leave it full size and uh, leave the outside uh, parts where you could see all the pokes from the spurs when the people climbed it. And uh, then I'm going to hollow it out. And uh, this pole was, we moved to this property in the early 70s, mid 70s probably. It was a sub, uh, we got a piece subdivided off of a, a large piece of property. So they put, had to put a, a line into it. So this was the original uh, hydroelectric pole that was put on our property when uh, we moved out here. And that's been a long time ago. So I don't know, this may turn out to be okay. It, kind of a keepsake, I guess, but um, it his, has history to, for us. Anyway, I'm going to take this out and take it off and try to remount it so I can hollow it out. So stay tuned and we'll see if it explodes. Well, the insanity of this project is just about to begin, and that is boring out the center. First, I'm going to start with a, a drill bit, a Forrester bit here. Uh, I've got it mounted up close here, and uh, later I'll have to uh, extend it. I've got an extender for that there. I've had to uh, steady it with this homemade uh, rest here and uh, it could have been made bigger but <laughs> this is quite a big piece. That piece of hydro telephone well it's called electric pole I guess. It's 12 inches in diameter and uh, I was gonna, I'll show you the how I, I modified the tailstock to uh, make it easier to bore because this whole lathe is totally homemade. So I'll just swing this over here and uh, you can see what I'm talking about here. Uh, there's the tool, my tailstock and I've got a, a lever on here so I can just use it like a drill press there with the uh, threading that I had on there it's just not adequate and strong enough to, to course a thread to uh, do it with the hand wheel there and this makes it so much easier. So uh, we'll just swing this back here so you can see there and I think you can get it and I'll turn it on and, and uh, start pouring. Here's my uh, setup with uh, for deep boring. I used an extension on that Forrester bit and um, got the air blower there so I can keep blowing it out as I progress for deeper. Of course I'll have to slide the tail stock up as I do it there. And there's a piece of tape as you can see on the boring bar there and I've measured the depth I want to go. The depth is 12 inches so I just put a tape on there and I'll know when I get to the right uh, depth there. Anyway, I'm getting kind of anxious now and I just better get started on uh, on getting the whole board out. Well, I've just been having a, just the greatest of time uh, hollowing this out. It's kind of exciting. seems to be working quite well. As you can see on the lathe right now, I have my uh, laser set up there. 
I didn't put it on at the beginning because you know you have lots of thickness, but when you get in there quite a ways, you can be cutting away and pretty soon, bang, you're already through. Anyway, I'll show this up a little closer here and you can uh, see it. Okay, there you can see the mount that I made. Uh, it bolts on with the two bolts for tightening the uh, boring bar in and two additional screws and uh, I welded a little pig to that and made this little clamp here to uh, secure it to the, the pig there. The tubing I'm using is aircraft tubing 4130. Uh, lots of strength and a fairly narrow wall. And uh, there's the top uh, swivel assembly and attachment point so I can slide the one bar in and out. And I'm coming way over here to the laser. I bought this laser online. Uh, looked like a good one. I guess it is a pretty good one. It's way too bright. Uh, has a key lock at the top there and you can turn it on. And it's so bright you can, uh, with a little bit of dust in the air, you can see where the line is going down. And uh, I'll give it a little close up here. I've set the wall thickness there for about uh, uh, three quarters of an inch or so. I like to leave it a little thick on this uh, particular one because of the cracks, etc. And I'm uh, coming along fairly good. So I'm getting out there fairly close to what I'd like to be. Uh, just move it a little bit here. Let's see, you can see it follows the, th the thick the, the shape of the uh, hollow turning there. But that's one bright laser. I've ordered a couple other ones that are less power, like uh, for cats, etc. There that use a double A battery. That looks pretty good. But you don't. I say not to leave this on for more than 30 seconds. It's really bright on the eyes, but boy, it sure works good. I found it uh, a lot, well, I don't know about better, but I certainly like it uh, to, uh, when I'm turning on the inside, and being that the tool bit is towards you there, I find it easier to use on the backside to uh, do my controlling on the backside of the lathe rather than the first side, but I'll turn it on here and just uh, make a few cuts in there so you can see the laser. When I'm in there quite a ways, being that the bar is, is on the fulcrum here, it can put a lot of vibration into the arm, but it seems to work fairly well. Another thing that compounds it in there is some knots in there, and it's like hitting steel. So if you just, by going slowly, it, uh, and being a little careful once you get to the outside like that, it, it performs reasonably well. Anyway, I'll continue working in here and try to finish this up in the next little while. It's gone way faster than I expected. In case you're uh, wondering, I uh, do try to be as safe as possible compared to with dust, etc. And when you're doing this, the cedar dust is quite uh, toxic, you might say, I think, a little bit. Anyway, I've got these masks that I'm starting to wear now that I found that was just utterly fantastic. You can wear it in the shop and not be uncomfortable and it works just great. So easy to put on, your glasses don't fog and I suggest if you're I suggest getting one of these for all of you. But anyway it's just simple. It just puts right on 
and clips on the back and uh, put some safety glass, safety ear protectors on and I'm ready to roll. Anyway, great mask. Here's another idea for uh, sanding on the inside. I made this little uh, sanding tool up. Just a piece of uh, large uh, round stock uh, with a dowel slot cut across the top and then you can grab a piece of belting from a belt sander pop it in the slot twist it lock the center run around the outside and uh, put a screw in it and a piece of foam there thick foam a little bit soft seems to work fairly good i'm just going to sand up the inside there just a little bit so i guess i better uh, put my mask back on so there we go some hair protectors ready to go Well, I guess that wasn't such a dumb idea after all. It, uh, I ended up with a finished pro project and it was lots of fun. I got to try the uh, laser out for the first time and uh, I think I'm very pleased with the end result. It's a fairly good sized piece of uh, turning and uh, it worked very well. So here's the uh, finished pro product. Uh, you can see the uh, texture around the outside from people climbing the pole over years doing inspections and repair work etc and uh, it'll be good nice keepsake uh, from that uh, pole that was put in when we first moved here The first one that I made, uh, this one here with the uh, first, the second articulating arm that I made, uh, I thought it was quite big, but uh, when you compare the two, it's uh, it's a lot a lot smaller. So I guess my next uh, projects maybe we'll try to make a small one out of uh, some exotic wood or something. But the articulating arm that. Uh, I uh, made out of wood. If it made uh, a project as big as this without uh, too much effort, uh, very successful, it should do a smaller one too. Actually the next uh, one that uh, I'm going to make, another articulating arm, it'll attach uh, right to the, the tool post here and you'll be able to use, it'll be more adaptable to smaller projects. So Stay tuned to my uh, channel here. I'm sure I'm going to have uh, some other great ideas that you might be interested in and you won't be bored watching. So thanks for uh, thanks for watching this one and uh, we'll see you another time.